Welcome to GNCC's Lunch and Learn focus on tech tools and options that will allow you to maximize your services and measure your success. This is a very interactive hour and an opportunity to learn how CRM software can allow you to be more efficient while growing your business at the same time, how to measure the effectiveness of all and your campaigns that you're running, and then moving over to shipping programs to reduce the cost and increase your sales. My name is Mishka Bolson. I'm glad that you chose to be with us over this lunch hour. This informative session uh, has been made possible because of partnerships. And one of our partners is the YMCA Employment and Immigrant Services of Niagara. Whether you're looking for entry level work or for a more senior role, finding a job isn't easy at any time. And that's why they offer employment programs to support employees through this process. And if you're an employer, they offer employment service programs as well. And it is my great pleasure to be joined by Cheryl Kincaid, who's passionate about the work of the YMCA Employment and Immigrant Services of Niagara, and so are we. Over to you, Cheryl. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, hope you're keeping warm. I was saying earlier that it's really snowing here in Niagara Falls, where I am, but I'm near the water, so... Um, but it's nice to be here. I do want to just tell you a little bit about the YMCA Employment and Immigrant Services um, and what we can do to help employers um, with their recruiting specifically. So we can help you hire um, new employees. We can host job fairs for your recruiting efforts. We uh, support apprenticeships to increase skilled trades workforce for you. And right now we are currently very busy with a new project. It's called our WIN project, which stands for Workforce Innovation Network. And what that is, is geared towards specifically to um, employers who are looking to hire skilled trades people. And we are uh, registering clients, which are youth 29 and under, or women or un other underrepresented groups um, that are looking to get into skilled trades and connecting them with employers who are willing to take them on. So if you are in a position to do some hiring for skilled trades, please give us a call and contact us and we'll be happy to tell you a little bit more about that program. Cheryl, thank you so very much. I think it's such an important area and a critical area where I think a lot of our uh, members as well are finding some significant challenges in filling some of the positions. So thank you for all that the YMCA Employment and Immigrant Services of Niagara is doing for our community. Really appreciate it. And leading today's workshops are Amanda Beach. She's the account executive at Freightcom and Clickship. She's responsible for managing multiple accounts, as well as leading the Chamber's shipping program, serving small to medium-sized business and e-commerce merchants across the country. It is their mission to build tools that businesses love to use and that help improve shipping efficiency and lower the costs. Just a little bit about Freightcom. It's an easy-to-use web-based shipping platform that offers businesses exclusive rates on freight and courier shipping domestically and across the border. And international services are also available for courier shipment out of the Canada and the United States. And ClickShip is a Freightcom product that offers the same discounted rates and easy to use interface with built in optimization for e-commerce such as Shopify, WooCommerce, Walmart Canada, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and more. And our second presenter is actually Joe Jones. He's an award-winning co-founder of Symmetric which is having received, uh, after having received computer programmer analyst degree from Canada College and later attending an A plus certification as a computer technician. Joe has also been the recipient of many prestigious awards, receiving the recognition of the 2007 Young Entrepreneur of the Year and being a recipient of the top 40 and 40 business achievement awards in 2009. He makes it a priority to adapt to each client's needs and propose a creative solution. Whether he is at a boardroom meeting, chatting over the phone or speaking at an event, his clever ingenuity, passion and limitless imagination make him a cornerstone in his company. Joe and Amanda, first of all, let me thank you for being actually with us. And to all of our participants, thank you for actually spending this hour with us. We are expecting and intending it to be a highly interactive one. 
The next 35 minutes, roughly, we will have presentations, which will be followed by Q&A. So if you have a chance to hold some of your questions, uh, please do so. And or while the questions are coming up, please utilize the chat function at the bottom of your screen. And we will see it here on our end. And we're more than committed to actually getting to all of your questions. And if you wish to enable live transcript, please refer to the button uh, on your top screen. No, it's actually in Zoom at the bottom screen for that option. And on that note, let's start out with the presentation. And I think, Joe, you are the one who is going to go first. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to try sharing my screen here. Let's see if we can get this going. Everyone see that OK? Awesome. Well, it's a pleasure to be doing this today. So the topic that I'm going to talk to you about and uh, kind of going in depth a little bit is about CRMs. Um, I'm uh, one of the owners of Symmetric and we started just over 20 years ago now and there wasn't a whole lot on the internet for CRMs at the time. Uh, and I wish that when we started off, this would have been one of the tools that I would have picked right off the bat uh, to incorporate in our company. There's so much information you can use. Um, there's so much uh, data you can glean from it and the way that it can help you manage leads, track reporting uh, and understand your business as a whole is phenomenal. So if you're not using a CRM in your business and you're maybe the type that likes to jot it down on paper or Excel or things like that, I would definitely encourage you to take another step and see if there's other tools that can help you. So a great example of that is I used to think that I was really good at following up with leads. I'd had a system in place and I would follow up with all these leads. And then as time went on, I actually started noticing that uh, a lot of the leads that I would actually go after would be only the ones that seemed to be the squeaky wheel. So the ones that gave me the most amount of attention, then I would go after them. And then I'd have this other deposit of leads that I actually wouldn't follow up with. Uh, and so that became a cycle. And then I started looking at this. And when I started using a CRM, it became evident of how I could actually use the CRM to get me better leads, better traction, uh, and follow up with those automatically. So I didn't have to do all that uh, tedious work of following up with a, an estimate. So um, I'm going to go through the process here a little bit with you. And if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. And, uh, and later on, if you want more information, I'm more than happy to uh, do a one-on-one -on -one or show you some other videos that would help you uh, get some more information. So here we go. CRMs and you. So most businesses, when I ask them, how many leads do you generate per month? Uh, a lot of them are like deer in the headlights. They just have no clue how many they're generating. They know that they get leads. They know that they come in through an email, they get a phone call, but they're actually not calculating how many leads they're getting per month. So when it comes time to do any sort of marketing, they're at a little bit of a loss because they can't actually articulate how many leads that they got last month over last quarter, over the previous year. And so this becomes a little bit hard to gauge when you wanna see the success of your marketing plan. Um, so tracking how many leads you get per month is very important. So if you're not, this could be a great way to uh, dive into a CRM and see the benefits. Also, do you have a system in place to manage those leads? So again, usually we, we all have our internal system, um, but this becomes a little different when you hire people. When you get more people in that sales channel managing leads, you need a system in place, making sure that everyone is doing the exact same process from beginning to end, and then being able to monitor that process to look for weak spots is a great way to make sure that your company is always growing and that you understand what's happening with every single lead. At any time, you should be able to know it. This is how many leads I have. Here are, many, here are all the different stages of those leads. There's X amount of leads in this stage, X amount of leads in that stage. You should be able to clearly uh, know that number and be able to gauge the effectiveness of every step in that process. And then how likely are you, are you to follow up with a lead that falls off? So this is a good one because uh, growing up, I was always taught that when some, I worked in a flower shop, my family owned a flower shop, and they always taught me that when someone comes through those doors, yes, they're, they may say that they're, they're browsing, they're just looking, but they've actually come in for a reason. And so with your marketing, with your website, with any online company, um, in reality, you've paid for that visitor to come to your website in some sort of way. You've paid for them by advertising, you've paid for the cost of the website, you've done maybe uh, campaigns, and you've paid for that user to be there. So you want to be able to, to make sure that you followed up with that lead. Just because the customer doesn't buy right now doesn't mean they're not going to be a customer in the future. So having some sort of way to retain that information and capture it and then be able to follow up in the future is really critical. Common mistakes that hinder growth when we don't have a CRM is that there's no clear cut path to the sales funnel from marketing. Uh, there's no goals in place for tracking the number of leads. There's no plan for when a customer contacts us. 
and there's no system in place to manage those leads and keep you accountable. And then assuming that if they don't respond, they're not interested. So if we can fix some of these things, we see greater growth in all aspects of our business. Uh, this helps all the way from the beginning to the end of how we're tracking, how we're monitoring, the plans that we're putting in place, the team, how they're utilizing uh, all the tools that we have as a company. Uh, and then making sure that, you know, leads that do come in, we're trying to get the fullness out of them, making sure that if they're not ready today, maybe they're going to be interested down the road. And understanding why they're not interested is also very critical. So what is a CRM? Our CRM, a CRM is a custom customer relationship management. It's basically a strategies companies use to track customer relationships from pre to post sale. A CRM software is a software that stores information on a client and prospect and interacts with employees. It also helps with the marketing and sales center points where we can actually track emails, phone, phone calls, website visits, live chats, social media. It's all tracked through the system. So the CRM that we use actually tracks everything. So when someone emails our company, when they call us, uh, when they go to Facebook and they send a message, when they go to the website and they do a chat, every page that they looked at, how long they looked at that website, every page. Uh, if we send them a PDF, how many, how many pages they looked at that PDF, uh, and how long they spent on each page in the PDF, we can track all that information. We can even track the information that when a company comes to the website and they don't fill out a form, say if it's a, this company just visiting our website, we're able to see that this, customer, this company came to our website, they looked at these many pages, they came from this referring source, so maybe they came from an ad or another website, here's how many employees they have, here's their revenue, uh, here's their Facebook profile, their LinkedIn, their Twitter, their address, their phone number, we get all that information by the CRM just telling us that this company came to the website. So then I can choose to follow up with them if I feel like they're an interesting prospect. So all that information is done with the power of a CRM. So CRMs, a lot of people think that they are expensive. Um, they're going to cost you more money and time. But in reality, um, the average salesperson spends two hours a day on da uh, manual data entry and tracking. So they're entering information in different platforms. They're trying to store that. They're making adjustments all the way through. So our company, we typically bill $90 an hour. So if we can't bill uh, for that, if we're not, we can't bill for that data entry, that's just not something I can charge the client. So that means two hours out of every day, we're not billing for employee. So if we do that across the, the board, that if we're able to save on that, that manual data entry, we're saving $43,000 a year. So by having the system in place, we can actually recoup some of that money, make everyone more efficient and have data that's not redundant. And it's probably going to be less error free because we're not going to have you know typos and things like that because the users ent entering that data and it's also pulling that data from other sources so a great example is when the user puts in their email address it automatically finds the company information stores it in the system for us puts all the company address and phone number um, and all that information right into the crm automatically so no one's having to manually put that in and it's grabbing that data automatically for us so again, it's a customer tool that helps us uh, manage our business, sell and market to our customers. So here's the five benefits of a CRM. And one of them is it organizes all your leads and customer information into one place. It can help you automate. A CRM uh, is basically software that makes it easy to run your sales process very smoothly. So a great example of that, when someone fills out a form on our website, uh, and, and they want, and they're interested in our service, I need to book a meeting with them. I can't give them an estimate until I've actually booked a meeting with them. So one of the things that the CRM does is it automatically emails that person a series of emails until they a, either booked a meeting with me or replied, because that's the first job that needs to be accomplished is to book that meeting. So in prior times, I would have had to email them manually, call them, try to find out a time, go back and forth to figure out a time where I, that works for both of us to book a meeting. With the CRM, it automatically emails them. It gives them a link to my calendar, finds a, a date that's available for me, presents that to the user. The user can pick a date that's available for them. It connects us both, puts it in my calendar, automatically will then send the customer a Zoom notification saying, hey, here's uh, the, the date that you selected. Here's the, the, the Zoom um, se session for you to go and meet with Joe. And it sends them a reminder email and everything. And I haven't had to do a thing. It's done all automatically. So that process has saved me hours over the years because I've been able to do that automatically. And the customers like it because they can pick their own time when they want to meet with me. And everything's done instantly. 
sales reporting. So having all your sales tracked in a certain order. So basically with our sales process, we have different sessions that we need to go through. We have, you know, booking a call, we have uh, getting an estimate, doing a discovery session, you know, signing off on the estimate, closing it. And so you want to be able to track all those different uh, basically touch points within your sales process. And you want to know how many leads you have in each one of those touch points. With a CRM, it can automatically move those things through each touch point for you based on how your sales are going. You give it a little trigger saying that, okay, I've sent them an estimate, automatically moves the customer to the next thing. If you put a value in, it can actually calculate all your deals or leads in that specific category. And then based on your track record of how long it takes you to go through each one of those stages, it can actually forecast how much it thinks you're going to make this month based on what you normally do. So then you can do some forecasting and see how well this month is going based on your previous quarters or months. So actual, there we go, actual sales forecasting. So, you know, trying to do all these complicated, complicated formulas, um, and, you know, on the back of a napkin, for example, the system tracks it automatically. So as soon as you put it in, it's going to track it. It's going to keep track of all your communication to tell you what's more effective. And it's going to store all that data in the CRM. And if you have more than one salesperson, it can do that across the board and give you a manager view of all your deals that are happening and how many deals are in every stage for every employee. Um, customer and segmentation. So this is a great one because we all know that it's easier to sell to an existing customer than it is to try to get a new one. So segmenting your customers in, in different lists based on different parameters will help you be able to market to them. So if you had a customer that was interested in this, then you can automatically put them in a list. So the CRM is intelligent enough if you give it parameters to say, everyone who bought this product at for, from me, put them in here. And then based on that, I want them to receive these type of emails after because you want to be able to market or cross market or cross promote some of your products or services. So it can actually do all that for you, put them into sales cycles or regions based on whatever you're looking to identify that customer by and track all that for you. Um, scaling. So it will help you understand your process. So after you get so many leads in there, you'll be able to repeat that process and then help it grow. So one of the most difficult things that we see for business owners is that they may be a great salesperson, but it's very hard to duplicate themselves because they've relied on their sales skills the whole time. So when they hire another salesperson, it's very difficult to duplicate that because all they have is which, what is ever in their head. They've done this so long, they know the product and they know the service, but now when you say, okay, we need to hire more sales teams, it's very difficult to train them. So when you're doing a CRM, you can actually outline all the steps that you want to happen and then be able to train and translate that information to your other sales team. So the onboarding process becomes easier and accountable because now you can actually track what that salesperson is doing and you can jump in to help them and help grow that sales process in your company. So the one that we use is uh, called HubSpot. Um, and basically, if you go to our website here, spcan.com slash CRM, you can actually sign up for a free account. That will notify me that you've signed up and I'll be able to help you walk through some of the setup tools. Um, you can actually put the CRM connected right to most websites instantly, and it's free. Um, so you can use a lot of these tools right out of the gate for free. And as you grow, there's actually more tools that you can expand upon and get into uh, as time permits. And as obviously as your budget permits as well. So when you go through that process, um, there's some things that you want to know. Uh, basically, you put the code on your website. It starts tracking. It starts grabbing every form that comes in. So as users fill out information on your website, it's automatically putting them into the CRM for you. So it's automatically creating all that data entry instantly for you. And then it's allowing you to then navigate your sales process and figure out how, what you want to do. So this is a free version here that you can actually try out. And I'd be more than happy to walk you through and help you get set up. And so you can see how it can be beneficial. So I'll just give you a quick overview. This is kind of what it looks like. So when you log into the CRM, you're going to see a panel that shows the customer information. And then as you see through here on the, on the top, you're going to see activities, notes, emails, calls, and tasks. This is everything that can be tracked about the user. So um, in tracking can be manual entries that you've put in that you want to identify about the customer, or it could be information that the CRM is automatically gleaming from the data they provided. you. And so everything can be tracked, every form of communication, phone calls, notes. Uh, so all your, your entire team is on the same page with all the communication or activities that has happened with every customer. Um, this is a prospecting tool. So as companies visit your website, you can track everything. So they don't actually even have to fill out a form. It's using their information from their internet service provider. 
to grab the information about that company. So we can see that Boston University, for example, came here and they looked at this website. Uh, then we can scroll over to see how many pages they looked at, where they came from, how many employees they have, uh, their revenue, uh, and all the other information that's supplied right from that uh, prospecting tool. Uh, so then if you're an aggressive salesperson, you can actually go out and communicate with that person and say, hey, I saw you looking at our website. I thought I'd give you some information. So depending on what your sales strategy is, that may be a good thing or a bad thing, um, but you can actually go and create some uh, understanding of how your marketing is working based on the companies that are coming, even though they may not have filled out a form on your website. Deal management, this is another great tool where all your deals get loaded in a different pipeline. Uh, and in that pipeline, you have different steps, obviously scoping the call, setting the budget, providing them with an estimate, uh, you know, getting them to sign the contract, setting up the project, whatever your steps are through your sales process, you can manage all the deals in that stage. And then you can see there's a dollar amount at the bottom. So as you put those estimates in place, it will start uh, calculating the, the, the total amount of those deals in that column and then start forecasting it for you to see where you are. You'll also can do triggers or notifications that, hey, you have X amount of deals in this stage and these ones haven't received any type of activity or communication. It will notify you that you need to follow up or reach out to those customers. Templates and sequences. This is another great one where you basically, you, we use them all the time. We're always sending the same type of information all the time. And it's great to be able to see um, what is uh, those, those things happening and be able to understand what templates you wanna be able to send out. So uh, we send a lot of templates out from introductions and everything like that. Um, but one of the things that you wanna be able to do is make sure that those templates are effective because you could send a lot and some of them work, some of them don't. With the CRM, it'll actually tell you that this template actually outperforms this other template you've created. So then you can pick and choose what template you want to be able to use and it'll actually help you determine which one's working. Um, the sequences is the one that does a job. So like I said before, sequence is designed to do a specific action. So a great example of that is when they come to the website, fill out a form, I need them to book a time with me. So getting them to book a time is a sequence where it automatically communicates on my behalf using pre-designed templates and then tries to get the user to book a meeting. Once they've booked a meeting, the sequence has done its job and stops. If they don't book a meeting, it keeps going until I've given uh, a parameter of when to stop. Um, but it also will stop if the user replies because now it's on me to respond to that user. So sequences can be very helpful, save time, and so, so can templates. Meetings, this is a, a great example where it ties into Office 365 uh, or Google, and you can actually connect your calendars right to it. It will automatically look for dates and times you're available based on what you've given it as um, available booking um, details. And then from there, the user can book their own time. It will automatically enter their information in the, into the CRM, give you a notification, put it in your Outlook calendar, send the user a, a reminder and all the contact information for your meeting. So this can be done automatically, and you don't actually have to go and do that whole, you know, are you available at three o'clock? Oh, sorry, that got double booked. This takes care of all those uh, problems that we see with uh, trying to book meetings. The dashboard and reporting is a great tool because this helps business owners understand everything they need to know about their business from every aspect, whether we're talking about team interaction, communication, sales, reporting, uh, website uh, interactions from traffic to all um, to visits and page views, all that information is tracked and it's instantly updated. So as you log in every morning, you can see how your website is performing, how your sales are performing, how your service end is performing. All, those, all that data is tracked to help you keep in the loop and understand what you need to fix or what you need to address. So that kind of is CRMs in a, a nutshell. Um, I have a, a much longer explanation here on the, the screen where you can actually go through and see some of the other videos that we've done based on this type of topic. So thank you. Joel, thank you so very much. And I can see that there have been a number of questions that have been already pre-submitted to us and that are coming in via the chat. So I'm looking forward to getting to them. But before sure. doing so, um, I thought I'm going to pass it over to Amanda uh, to actually give us another way of looking at our business and ways that we can actually maximize the services that we regularly use and uh, also in becoming more effective actually uh, with our customers and the products that we are shipping and distributing uh, all around the world. So Amanda, I'm going to pass it over to you. And then right following that, in about like 10, 15 minutes, um, we will get to some of the questions. Amanda, all yours. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much um, for having me here today. And it's very nice to meet you all. Um, just on the point with Joe's presentation there, we actually use HubSpot here at uh, Freightcom. And let me tell you, it's a game changer. So um, recommending it to everybody as well. Um, but yeah, well, like, it, like Rob has said, um, my name is Amanda and I am managing the Chamber Shipping Program here at Freightcom. And I'm also an account executive as well and a sales team lead. Um, so I'm just going to go over today a little bit about the Chamber Shipping Program, what we do here. Um, I'm also going to focus more on the e-commerce side of things, um, how to boost your sales, and different trends that are going on in 2021 as well. And then I'll tie it all together with some of the programs that we offer and that you can take advantage of as well. So just a little bit about um, Freecom. So Freecom was founded in 2010 with a vision to help out small to medium-sized businesses, lower their shipping costs and improve their shipping process. And the way that we do that is what we've done is actually gone to top national carriers like UPS and FedEx and DHL on the courier side. And then we also do have the freight side as well, which we've partnered with Dan Ross, Maritime Ontario, FedEx Freight, so on and so forth. And we have negotiated discounted rates based on our volume that we do as a whole, with the hundreds of thousands of businesses that use us. And then we give out our discount to these small to medium-sized businesses who maybe don't have a large enough volume to go directly to a carrier to negotiate their own discount, heavily discounted rates, basically. Okay. So with us here at Freightcom, um, as was mentioned, we do have kind of two sides to it. So we do have Freightcom, which I guess you can say is our mother of it all, <laughs> um, is our main platform. So it's completely free. You sign up for a free account. You put in your ship from, your ship to, your dimensions and weight. And you get instant rates from all the different carriers. So it's a great rate shopping experience. You don't have to go to each carrier, find a rate, whoever's cheapest, go with. We consolidate it all into one platform. And then ClickShip, which is what I'm going to be focusing more on today, is our e-commerce side. So what we've done is built ClickShip for e-commerce store owners in mind. Um, to basically simplify their shipping process. You know, a lot of people have resorted to online shipping um, and we have all these integrations. You can actually integrate your store right into our system to make your shipping process quite simple. And I'll get into more of that as well. Um, but as you can see there, there's some of the integrations we have available. There's Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Magento 2, Shopify, WooCommerce, Walmart, um, we also just launched Wix and Lightspeed as well. And we're always adding on more as we go. So getting into some of the e-commerce trends in 2021, um, you know, I'm, I'm a shipping expert. I'm not exactly an e-commerce expert. However, we do work with e-commerce store owners every single day, helping them um, build their stores, finding different trends. We we have a marketing team who does a bunch of research, he does blogs and things like that. So these are things that we have seen this past year that I thought was, um, was really great to share. Obviously online shipping is a given. Everybody has resorted to online shipping um, and online shopping, right? So a lot of, especially with the pandemic right now, a lot of people were forced to actually close down storefronts. So resorting to online shipping, online shopping. So, um, and I'm a huge stats person. So um, I pulled a bunch of different stats. So as you can see here in 2021 so far, there have been over 27 million e-commerce users in Canada, which is accounting for 72.5% of Canadian population and is expected to grow to 77.6% in 2025. So one of the biggest trends we're also seeing this year is the augmented reality, AR video shopping. You know, this is, this is huge. This has been a game changer for a lot of people. Um, you know, not having to leave their home, not having to go and try on different things, seeing different things in their home. So, you know, especially for industries like uh, home decor or fashion, it's huge. Actually, recently I used this. Um, I'm doing some home renovations in our house and we got new floors and new paints and things like that. And I wanted some new area rugs. So it's actually able to take a picture of my area and insert a rug and see exactly how it would look in my home. So um, they're actually saying here that it's predicted that 100 million consumers 
will shop using AR in 2021. And 35% of people say they would be shopping online more if they could virtually try on a product before buying it. And 22% would be less likely to visit a brick and mortar store if AR was available for them. Another big trend going on, going green. Everybody is going green. Everybody cares about the environment. So it, it's huge. And it can also make or break a sale. Um, you know, some of the ways to do this is using eco-friendly packaging, biodegradable mailers, recyclable materials, biodegradable packaging materials, using smaller containers, kind of trying to do whatever you can to minimize the waste. It was actually said, I actually read something the other day that those um, packaging peanuts, the foam packaging peanuts, they actually take 500 years to decompose. So if you can just think of all of the different products you get, all the different products you sell, how many, how much that actually builds up, right? So, um, so yeah, trying to get, you know, I know it's not for some people, you can't just, you know, change it in the blink of an eye. I'm going completely green. It's not realistic, absolutely. Um, but, you know, maybe using smaller containers, less packaging. Like, I don't know how many times I bought something from Amazon, for example, something as small as like a pen, and it comes in a box the size of my microwave could fit in. It's, it's a little bit ridiculous, a lot of waste, right? So using less packaging, um, smaller containers definitely goes a long way as well. Okay. Um, E-commerce as well, some trends, social media. Social media nowadays is huge. And you know, it actually has a global audience in the billion, in the billions, right? You have all the different platforms. You have TikTok, which is actually the most downloaded app in Apple's App Store, with users spending over $62 million a year. Then you have the Instagram, they launched their shopping tab. Facebook, they push users to use their built-in storefronts. Pinterest uses Bible pins to promote items for sale. So social media, it's it's not going anywhere. It keeps growing and it's definitely a channel that you want to get your products on. I'll go into a little bit more detail of how to do that on one of the next slides, but um, it's definitely a huge trend going on for sure. Okay. And then taking some of those trends and putting them into your marketplace to get higher views and to boost your sales. Marketing, obviously is a huge one. Um, and you know, sometimes marketing, you don't really have the budget to maybe hire a marketing firm or anything like that. But you know, there's a lot of things that you can do yourself to, to do your own marketing. One of the things is constantly posting content. Like I mentioned before, all the different social media handles. Um, you know, you always wanna be posting your products. You want to be posting either your customer using the products and things like that. Um, you want to engage in conversations on social media. So if somebody, if somebody messages you, make sure you're messaging them back. You want to drive excitement, contests, giveaways. You know, there's, we see this one a lot and it's very, very effective where you'll do a, maybe do a giveaway and um, you'll have, you'll have customers come to your, uh, let's say Instagram for an example, and they'll have to like, they'll have to share, they'll have to comment and they'll tag a friend. And then that will keep going on and on and on. And you know, every tag, every friend they tag, they get put into a draw and then they could get a giveaway. So that actually goes out and reaches so many different people by doing that. Um, so it's a great way to, uh, to market your products. Reviews and testimonials, again, huge. Reviews are ginormous. I don't know about you, but before I buy anything, <laughs> I look at the reviews. I want to see what people are saying about it. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, you know, trying to get your customers to write reviews is, is huge and it's very, very effective. I talked a little bit too about influencers, you know, reaching a huge audience. You may have to, you know, fork out a little bit of money, give them some free products, find some influencers. But some influencers on social media have millions of followers. So just think about all the people you can reach by, you know, maybe giving out a couple of free products. Content marketing, another big one, blogs, podcasts, videos. People are lazy nowadays. Nobody wants to read. <laughs> videos goes a long way. And marketplaces. So being on multiple different marketplaces is, is big. Um, it's a great way for you to reach more shoppers. It's a great way for you to increase the chance of making a sale. 
I know a lot of people before they buy something, they'll try looking at Amazon, they'll try looking at Walmart, they'll, they'll just look different places. And if they see your product on multiple different marketplaces, there's a higher chance that they're gonna buy that product because it also gives your product credibility. Um, so some other ways to increase marketplace views and boost sales is building an email list, you know, targeting people that you know that are already interested, making sure they stay in your, you're in their inbox all the time, getting their permission to send them promotions. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. The, the most popular ways we have seen is pop-ups. As soon as somebody goes to your website, there's a pop-up, put in your email, receive 10% off your first purchase. They'll put in their email and guess what? They're already in your system and you can use a CRM um, like Joe's there and you know, they're already put in there and then they can automatically send out emails to them about, you know, different sales, look at this, look at that, new products, things like that. Um, another way as well is an opt-in box at checkout. They go to checkout. Would you like to see perceived promotions? Yes or no. Um, it's not as effective as a pop-up, but it still works. Okay. Minimizing cart abandonment. This is a huge one. Um, you know, the latest stats have shown that an average of 79.17% of shoppers abandon a site after adding items to their cart. So that, like that's 80% of shoppers abandon a site. That is a huge number. Um, and, you know, there are lots of ways to try to minimize this. So some of the main ones here that I have listed is you want to show a clear call to action. So for example, if somebody's shopping around at your store, they purchase a couple of items, they put it in their cart, and now they have no idea where to go. So you wanna make sure it is clear that the, there's maybe a button for continue shopping and a button for checkout. Very, very simple, very clean. Um, you wanna provide and show delivery options. You know, this is a big one as well. Um, a lot of people have different needs. Some people want Canada Post, some people want um, UPS, some people want express, they don't care about the, they don't care about the cost, they care about the speed. So, you know, having your different delivery options is a big one as well. And obviously we'll get a little bit more into that with the shipping aspect as well. Um, offering guest checkout. This one is a big one. Um, you know, nothing is more annoying when you go to a website and they make you sign up, they make you become a member before you can check out. So offering maybe both offer a quick guest checkout, and they can also offer a member. If you become a member, receive 10% off for your next purchase, something along those lines, but giving them the options is a big thing, okay? Um, offering help. So, you know, not everybody is, is technically inclined. They know how to navigate everything, navigate the websites, how to check out. They may have some questions. So offering them help in any way you can is great. A chat box is a big one. I mean, I know a lot of small business owners, you're not gonna be on the computer, you're not gonna be available 24 seven. Um, if you're not, maybe you can have a callback button where they can leave a phone number and you can call them back. Or an email, they can send you a quick email and then you can um, reach back to them when you can. And multiple payment options. Um, a lot of people have different needs. Some people wanna pay by credit card. Some people wanna pay by, um, e-wallets, some people want to pay, you know, there's so many different options out there. So having more than just one option it is great for your business, right? Um, and then you want to sell your shipping. We're going to talk a little bit more into detail about selling your shipping as this is definitely a big, big thing. Um, and it can also make or break a sale, right? You know, how many people get to the checkout, they see the cost of shipping, um, and they just abandon the cart, right? So we'll talk a little bit more into that. So with this, you know, if you have a really good shipping option set up, you know, it builds trust in your brand. You can be up and you want to be upfront with your customers. You know, studies have shown that upwards of 22% of online shoppers want shipping costs to be stated upfront and early during the checkout process. So depending on how you have your website set up, if you have free shipping, if you have um, a flat rate for shipping, or if you have real-time rates at checkout, you just wanna make sure you are showing this to your customer, basically on the front page. This will, this will entice them to actually keep going and keep going and maybe shop more, maybe put more in their cart if they know they're getting free shipping, which takes us into offering free shipping. You know, 
Offering free shipping can be very, very effective. A lot of people, you know, our minds play tricks on us. As soon as we see the word free, we think we're getting something great. <laughs> so offering free shipping is super effective. And then case studies have shown that when customers were offered free shipping, orders increased by about 90%. So, you know, but it is really important that you make sure that if you are offering free shipping, that it's not affecting your bottom line. There's multiple ways of doing this. Um, one of the ways is, you know, maybe having a minimum saying if you purchase $50, then you'll get free shipping. So for an example, if somebody's ordering um, skincare products and they, instead of getting one month of skincare products, they'll purchase three months of skincare products to get the free shipping. This will also eliminate your shipping cost. It will also um, eliminate less packaging as we go back to the everybody going green less packaging, um, less for you to do, less processing. So having a minimum set up is a great way to do that as well. Offering free returns is free advertising. Again, a lot of people see free returns, they'll purchase more, right? So this acts as a show of good faith, communicates confidence in your own products. And they say 96% of customers would shop with a retailer again, based on an easy or very easy return experience. And about 62% of consumers would buy again if a brand offers free returns or exchanges. Um, fulfilling orders efficiently. This is another thing as well. If you're advertising, you are going to fulfill orders within one to three business days. Make sure you're, you are fulfilling orders within one to three business days. You can increase your customer satisfaction and also generates brand loyalty. Um, there's nothing worse than it just sitting there and your, your customer is going on to see if it's shipped, it's shipped, it's shipped for a week on end, you know, it's, you want to make sure that you're getting your orders out there. A way to do this is to make sure you have a great shipping options and great shipping solution, like break on a click ship. <laughs> okay, so kind of tying all of that together um, and how we here at Break Common Click Ship can help kind of make this all go together. Um, so with ClickShip, there's multiple features that we offer. One of them, and one of the most popular ones, is our smart packaging algorithm, talking back against the going green, right? So we actually have a system that can take all of your products, take the dimensions and weight, and it will also tell you which box to put it in. So for an example, if somebody goes to your store, they purchase four different things. Our system will automatically take the dimensions of those four different things and the weight, tell you which box to put it in, the smallest box, and then depending on how you have your, uh, your shipping set up, either give your customer a flat rate shipping or give your customer a real-time rate at checkout. So real-time rates at checkout is extremely accurate. Um, you'll have no hidden fees and you know your customers will pay exactly what the cost is, okay? Um, marketplace integrations, as I spoke, you know, talking about being on multiple different marketplaces, is, is very effective. Um, I mentioned to some of the ones that we do integrate with currently. And then with ClickShip, you can actually integrate multiple marketplaces into the one system. So you wouldn't have to, you know, go to Shopify for an example and check out and process all your Shopify orders, go to Amazon and do it all separately. It actually can put all of them into one. So it makes your shipping process very, very simple. And some other features that we have for ClickShip as well is you can actually own your own, add your own carrier accounts. So with this, for example, if you had your own account with Canada Post, um, you can actually upload your own account into our system. Again, to simplify everything, keep everything consolidated into one system instead of having to go back and forth. We also have a batch printing um, feature as well. So if you are super busy around the holidays, for an example, you have 10, 20, 30 orders coming in. Instead of having to do them one by one, you can actually just batch print them all at once, print all of your labels, schedule one pickup, away you go. And then a huge feature that we have as well is custom branding. Talked about marketing, talked about branding a little bit, um, you know, having your name out there as much as possible. So we actually have the option for you to add your own custom branding on any emails that get sent out. Um, any of the shipping labels, and also the packing slips. Mm -hmm. 
So how do chamber members benefit? Quickly, just gonna kind of go over this. Um, so you being a chamber member, you'll get exclusive discounted shipping rates with us. So not only will you just get the, the, the basic discounts, you'll actually get an extra 10% off. Um, you'll get a designated account manager. You'll always have somebody to go to. Um, you'll have an access of host of different added functionalities. You'll have a dedicated support team. So you'll have, you know, we have a full accounting team, um, a full customer service team, knock on wood, a full claims team. Um, so, you know, we kind of, I guess you can say, do the dirty work for you. You don't have to sit on hold with this particular carrier. We kind of do it all. Uh, testimonials and spotlights. This is a big one. I spoke about it a little bit before about reviews, testimonials, and things like that. We love to help. We're here to help out those small to medium-sized businesses in any way we can. So, you know, we've, before the pandemic, we actually used to have a lot of businesses, if they're in the area, come to us or we go to them. And we kind of do um, an interview sort of process. Um, we put it on all of our social media panels and, you know, try to just do different spotlights and get their name out there as well. And then how to sign up for Freycon. So it's super simple. You can actually just sign up with your chamber promo code, which you can get directly from your chamber, or you can contact myself as well, and I can definitely help you out. And then you would get set up with an account representative. So somebody will give you a call immediately and kind of onboard you, walk you through our system. If you have any pain points, if you're new to shipping, you have no idea what you're doing, we can help. We can consolidate with you, um, get to know exactly what your business is, and offer our support. And then you can start shipping with the discounted rates probably within about 15 minutes that you set up. Okay. And lastly, um, just talking a little bit about reviews, how I said reviews are important. I just wanted to show here some of our reviews. The Google review is our freight comm side and the Shopify app store click ship. Um, there's reviews on there as well. And lastly, if you would like to contact um, myself, get more information, have any questions at all, you can definitely do so. It's Amanda at freightcom.com or my phone number is there as well. And then I also have Jay Pizzo on here. He's our VP of sales. He's actually working closely with me on this, uh, this partnership and the chamber shipping program. So if uh, I hope this helped a little bit. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. And thank you so much. <laughs> Amanda, thank you so very much. This has been extremely helpful, uh, especially all the aspects that you are covering. And it's nice to know that you're also using a CRM, the same that Joe is using uh, at the same time. We've had a couple of questions that have come in and I was wondering if we can get to some of them. And if we can uh, go back, maybe Joe, I'm going to start out with you because those are some of the early ones uh, that have come in. And it's about the CRM that you spoke to. And the question was, is the pricing of the CRM software based on the number of leads or customers that people have? So if someone has a customer base of 3,000 or someone has a customer base of 20,000, does that make a difference? Um, in a nutshell, no, uh, unless you're email marketing uh, to those co contact lists. So for example, any email marketing software, there's usually a cost when you get over like 2000 subscribers um, because there's different regulations you have to follow with email marketing. Um, but if you're not actually using the email marketing tool, there's no cost to have those leads in the system. And that's helpful, actually, because there's a, a lot of people have questions around exactly that. And then the second part is again around the pricing of the system. And that is now based on how many people are using it. So there's a lot of uh, software systems that are based on if you have a team of 10, 10 people who would like to have um, steady access to it uh, and might have all their own ID login for it, does it make a difference on how big the team is, how many people are accessing it? So HubSpot's pricing is basically determined by the feature set that you're needing. Um, so when you get into different feature sets, so for example, if you're um, a small business and you don't need automation, and you're not wanting the system to automatically email people out, then you wouldn't need to purchase the automation feature. Uh, when you get into marketing, then you have a different type of pricing structure because like I said, there's email marketing that's attached to that. 
Um, but depending on if it's just general sales tools, like the free CRM version, you can put as many people on the free system as you need. Uh, it's just when you want them to do other things. So HubSpot grows, it's designed to grow with you as an organization as you grow. So um, as you, you know, unlock different things and you see the value in it, then it's going to grow with you, right? So for example, our company, we've un unlocked everything and we're using everything, but now we've gone to the place where it's just basically pays for itself. So depending, you have to grow with it. I wouldn't say that you're going to start off right away with all those bells and whistles, but you're going to grow into it and you're going to see the value of it and you're going to see how it's going to work with your business. Perfect. Excellent. And I, I think that's absolutely true because each business and organization kind of functions in their own way. I'm sure that there's a lot of similarities, but we all have our own way of moving forward and supporting the teams that we have to reach the goals that uh, that organizations have set out. So it's, it's good to hear. Amanda, this is a question that came in as we were promoting it. This is from someone who actually wasn't able to attend, but I thought uh, because we have so many people that are picking up um, the wow. webinar afterwards, uh, and they're asking what are some effective ways to market and promote uh, someone's business and I know that you touched on different ways um, and I think that you're offering some options there for people to utilize and uh, so I thought maybe this is a good question for you yeah so I mean you know there's there's so many different ways you know I talked a little bit about the different trends um, but social media social media is is huge right Everybody, especially now, everybody has resorted to online. Everybody's resorted onto social media. So, you know, you know, like using influencers, um, you know, using even your own kind of marketing strategies, like I said, posting, um, you know, just getting, getting your name out there where views are huge, um, making videos, doing blogs, using every kind of social media content you can think of is probably the best way to get your get your name out there and get your product out there i would say yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense you had touched on uh, one aspect of it and that was the green aspect and it's becoming louder and louder that voice of saying like i i don't want this type of packaging the big box with the tiny little item in there and all of those aspects we're, we're conscious of it can i recycle it or not do people ask about shipping options, which ones is the most environmentally friendly option or not? Do people look at those options uh, right now as well? Or is, uh, are, we, um, are we not there yet? You know, I don't think we're, we're exactly there yet. We're starting to get there. Right now, mostly people are, are talking about uh, the packaging aspect. Um, you know, how, how, can I, how can I eliminate you know, so much different waste. A, that's also going to go into their cost, right? So um, those are the conversations we've been having a lot. And yes, even talking about um, different shipping options, for an example, you know, a lot of right now, you, you know, everybody knows everything's going electric. There's all these different options that are coming out. So, I mean, we're not quite there yet with the shipping aspect, but it's coming. We're, we're really close there for sure with the eco times, for sure. Yeah, and I think this is something that often you hear in conversations that people have, and I think we are likely as consumers will be more patient knowing that it is a more environmentally friendly option than maybe otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, there's in our chat, there's a question from Brian and Brian, I think this, uh, or Joel, I think this question is specifically for you. Um, and it's a tech related question. And Brian is wondering how new privacy settings in email impacts the effectiveness of CRM email tracking, since it's more difficult to tell if someone is opening your email now or not. And I, I think Brian is such an really important message is that some of those laws, guidelines and settings are continuously changing um how has that impacted uh your services or the services that crm can offer hubspot can offer so um it's definitely going to impact you know even the um, even users doing marketing with uh, apple devices and trying to do retracking say on facebook and things like that we're definitely going to see different implement implementations that have to be done to or extra steps i should say that have to be done to actually dive into that marketing in a little more detail. But in reality, like the open rates of emails are only um, one factor that you're looking at. So I wouldn't base your whole marketing strategy around just the open rate because there's other things that you're gonna be able to tell if people are buying your product. Um, and in theory, unless you're if you've never sent out emails, you probably have a pretty good idea of a customer base and the rough percentage that you would get from any email you send. Um, but it, 
I, I would look at it as a whole, like look at links that are tracked, clicks that way, um, look at views on those pages or articles that you posted, tra tracking it from that aspect as well, if you're having a hard time seeing that data. So I wouldn't just use the, the data right from the email marketing piece solely. I would use a combination of things to try to attract the effectiveness of that campaign. Yeah, no, that's excellent. And there's a follow-up question on the same topic uh, for you, Joe, on this one. And this is looking at, there is so much engagement that is happening via social media right now. And uh, there is uh, just chats, messages, likes, other areas of it. How do we filter these kind of potential leads actually into our tracking system or into a CRM system? So, um... HubSpot, for example, you can actually put the Facebook, you can integrate it right with Facebook. So any chats that happen, um, it's not going to take necessarily posts 100%, but it will take chats that happen. So if someone actually uses Facebook Messenger, you can actually grab that information and pull it right into the CRM and log it in the timeline. It also works with LinkedIn, where you can actually do uh, in -mail, uh, email blasts through LinkedIn. Um, and then on top of that, you can actually integrate all your social media channels right into HubSpot and do all your posts and conversation replies. So then you can actually build lists of these customers actually have social media profiles with uh, our company. And we can actually communicate with them either through social media, through email, uh, through phone, whatever you like. But it, it basically develops a whole profile for that, that customer. And then you can see all the different aspects and, or ways that you can communicate. You can even tie in text messaging with that. A lot of the younger generation doesn't want an email, they want a text message. So you can actually bring all those under one umbrella and sync it up with the user. So you have a complete understanding of all the different methods to uh, communicate with that user. Yeah, I, I think that's excellent. You're absolutely right. I think you're touching on an important point as a, there's business to business, the business to end consumer communication that is taking place, but people are preferring different platforms. And Amanda, you must have see, must see the same on your end is that people probably in every aspect of your transaction, you would see different uh, communication tools that they're using, but also likely different payment options that they're choosing in other areas of it. Have you seen a significant change? We're talking often about a supply chain uh, interruption right now, a delay that is there. Has that changed some of the statistics when you talked about, uh, I think you called it cart abandonment, when people are actually you know, saying like, not willing to wait, or maybe I'm only doing window shopping here. Um, what impact might have this uh, supply chain interruption have had on online shopping and freight overall? Yeah, I know. It, you know what? It, it's an unfortunate supply chain is is huge. You know, a lot of stuff there is is stuck. You know, there you've seen. I'm sure you've seen on the news. You know. Um, just coming and trying to get in stuff from across the seas. There's been you no know, containers that have fallen over and, you know, it's just been a huge demand. People I'm sure you've seen too, like the cost of wood for an example is skyrocketed. So, so yeah, you know, um, it definitely has affected, has affected a little bit, but um, you know, we try to always speak with our customers as well as, you know, the best thing you can do is prepare prepare yourself and educate your customers. You know, you need to make sure you let them know that there can be delays that, you know, things that are going on, put in links, different links, um, you know, but in this, in this kind of whole situation going on, communication is key. You know, just having the communication between us and our customers and our customers and their end consumers, you know, converse, communication throughout the whole thing is definitely the key to this. Um, and you know, it, it's just a little bit of a, a bump in the road, but I know we're going to all get over it and, uh, hopefully things will be flowing back to, to normal soon for sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm conscious of the time. I'm always amazed by how quickly an hour goes by. I'm going to usually give my, my panelists here in like 30 seconds for closing remarks. Uh, you, Joe, you started out, Amanda, maybe for closing remarks, I'm going to pass it over to you. Uh, just from there, and then I'll go back to Joe. Amanda, for some closing comments. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, yeah, well, first of all, yeah, thank you so much for having me here today and for, for meeting everybody. And, you know, um, like I mentioned before, we're, we're here to help um, as much as we can. So whether you're a small to medium-sized business, it, you're just trying to get online, you're just starting to ship, um, we're here. We can even just be a consultant. So if you have any questions related to shipping, um, e-commerce or anything like that, feel free to definitely reach out and um, I'd be more than happy to, to help assist for sure. But 
but yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a great hour. And again, thank you so much. Yeah, you're more than welcome. And Joe, over to you. Well, thanks for uh, having me here today and inviting me to do this. Um, again, with everyone listening, uh, appreciate your attentiveness and all that. There's a lot of information jammed in a few moments, um, but I'm more than happy, happy to uh, you know, reach out uh, to anyone who needs uh, more assistance, assistance with that. We are a HubSpot Gold partner. So our job is to make sure that people who use the software, uh, who come through us uh, are well-educated on it and that we help them uh, find benefits to use it. Yeah, and I think, Joe, you just said the perfect thing. I think there was a lot of information that we're trying to bring into this, like one hour that we had. But I wanted to thank you for being so precise and, and really outlining so many different options that are available to business there. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for being with us over this uh, lunch hour. And thank you to all of our participants and attendees for being with us as well. And my special hooray always goes to the YMCA Employment and Immigrant Services of Niagara for making today's webinar possible. As I mentioned early on in the webinar, uh, it has been recorded and will be available on our website as well as will be shared with all the participants directly. Uh, so thank you for being with us and uh, to everyone, um, a wonderful last day of November. So hard to imagine that December starts tomorrow. So have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.